Any uh, housekeeping before we begin? Any questions regarding homework or anything like that? Yeah. Um, is there a way we can get the solutions for that quiz? Uh, or that the, the correct? They, they should have been posted after <laughs> uh, the due date. Really? Yes. Oh, maybe that's why. Maybe I checked it beforehand. Yeah, yeah. So when, when, after the due date uh, is up, uh, it should post automatically. If not, please let me know. I'll, I'll correct it. Anything else, guys? Um, Minora, I'm not, I'm not sure um, uh, what you're asking. Is it possible if we didn't have a penalty taken up for wrong answers on the homework? Um, no, I, I, I think it's, uh, it, it's, I, I think it's only 3% per, per um, wrong answer for each problem. So it's not that much. Oh, I have a, I, I think I think it's uh, valuable because um, sometimes people tend to just like type in uh, random answers, and I, th I think it allows uh, a student to be more um, deliberate with their answers. Um, uh, yes, uh, somebody else had a question. Uh, I was just wondering about that last question on the quiz. What when uh, part B? And then some about the satellite, and it said how many significant figures are needed in the distance. And I thought it was one. Um, <clears throat> I have to open up the problem uh, because okay. the numbers change for for each person, so I would have to look at yours. Um, it, it, send me an email. Uh, All right. You can send it to, to the whole class, and then I, I could respond to the whole class with the answer so that uh, um, everybody will, will know it. So uh, just to include the, the less, uh, rest of the class on the email. Uh -huh. uh, anything else, guys? Nope. All right. Let's begin. All right, so we finished off uh, last week on uh, section 2.7, and uh, we went over uh, uh, just uh, a free falling object dropping it from some height, and it follows out kilomatic equations because gravity, uh, for most intense pur purposes, has a, a, um, gives it a, a constant acceleration. Um, it's only when you get very far away from the Earth that you start to uh, deviate from this. And there's other little phenomena that occurs, but um, this is roughly like a 1% error or even less. Um, and we'll go into some of the errors and, and more about um, uh, deviations from this constant acceleration later on in, in, um, in the in the course when we talk about gravity and, and whatnot. So let's write down, let me write down the kilomatic equations as we'll be using them for a, a bit. Let me see if I can make the video, just give me a second. I wanna see if I could enable HD. I think I'm gonna buy a better camera for this. But right now it's clear. All right, so let me write down the kilomatic equation so that we have it handy.
And then uh, D over here, I'll, I'll write D out. So when you see D in this equation, it's just X, the whatever position you end up at minus the initial position, it's just the distance. And then the average velocity, which is just the end of, start and ending points since it, it's only a straight line, you divide. It's only linear. Um, okay. Now, do this. We'll keep this on the board. Uh, okay. So last time we just calculated uh, uh, the position after a certain time uh, when we drop it from a, from uh, from the leading tower of Pisa, right? That's the example uh, um, two fourteen. Let's uh, discuss this a little bit more, right? So let's discuss the situation in the example. To sixteen. All right, so somebody has a ball, all right, and they throw this ball upwards, right, and it goes upwards, right, and it gets a certain height and we know that it will fall back down. Now this ball will fall back down in the same position, but just to uh, show the path, I, I kind of uh, had two lines, even though it goes, uh, if we throw it perfectly vertical, it'll come back down along the same path. It's a, um, so that we can consider it a one dimensional problem. It's only moving along the Y. All right, and let's label the axis to get used to it because we'll move to two dimensions and three dimensions. We'll have the axis over here, All right? And so we throw it up with some initial velocity, V, V naught, right? And they give it to us in this problem. So V naught, I'll write it down over here. V naught is equal to 15 meters per second. And and they ask, how high does it go? And B, how long is the ball in the air? All right. So we throw this ball up and we know that it comes back down due to gravity. So let, let's consider the situation, right? So what's the acceleration on, on this, on the ball? Anybody? 9.8 meters a second. It's great. Yes, 9.8 meters per second, right? Is this the full information? For the acceleration? The second squared. Uh, yes, thank you for the square. But 
that's not, I wasn't really talking about the units um, so much as we're missing some something else that's very important here, All right? Thank you. Yes, right. The direction of this acceleration. Now, in in one dimension, uh, we we can only specify the direction by giving it a positive or negative sign. It's either you know applied in uh, upwards or downwards in this case, right? Along positive y, which is usually specified as upwards, or the negative y, right? And um, for this problem, we'll take uh, the up direction as positive and the down direction as negative. This uh, doesn't always happen. Sometimes it's easier to just take the negative as pos as the positive direction so that any upwards force would be, you would give it a negative sign. It works out as long as you're consistent with it. But because we have a, vo a velocity going upwards and we're used to thinking as uh, being in ver or going uh, upwards direction as increasing distance and downwards as, as decreasing, we'll keep this uh, 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 system. So our acceleration is actually negative, right? And it's um, negative G or uh, 9.8, right? Now, throughout the whole problem, is this, does it have the same acceleration? So at the top, what happens to the ball at the top? Uh, zero. What's zero? zero? Zero velocity, zero acceleration. So, it, okay, so let's think about it. So at the top, right, it reaches a turning point. It, the, uh, we, we give it some initial velocity, right? Um, and, it, you know, it's moving upwards, and then because the velocity is going upwards, and as it's moving upwards, it's slowing down to the acceleration. But it, it's the it, but the velocity stays positive, right? Until it reaches this point, and at this point, the velocity is zero. As uh, I, I'm sorry, I, I don't know, I didn't couldn't see uh, the name of whoever said it, but as Ash. Said, Ash, yes, thank you, and um. At the top, it slows down until it gets to zero, right? Then what happens? Once the velocity goes to zero, then what happens? The acceleration becomes negative 9.8 meter per second. So then over here, the acceleration is now accelerating, is increasing the speed of, of the ball, right? Because now the velocity and the acceleration are both pointing in the same direction, right? So we're increasing the speed since the acceleration is in the same direction as the velocity. So Over here, we're velocity. experiencing a deacceleration because the velocity, I should probably put the colors, but it's okay. Um, the velocity is in the opposite direction of the acceleration. But what happens at the top? Uh, so, uh, uh, somebody said that uh, uh, the acceleration is zero, right? We know that the velocity is zero, but the, the, does this mean that the acceleration has to be zero? So let's draw a graph of the velocity, right? should always confirm your intuitions by equations or even graphs. Um, so let's see what happens. So we start at, at 15 meters per second, right? This is 15, right? Then we, the velocity decreases at a certain rate, right? Uh, and the slope is 9.8, right? And then th at this point, the velocity is zero. So th this is the time axis. Right? Then what happens? The velocity starts increasing 
and the negative regime, right? The velocity changes and goes negative. Now, if you look at this point, what is the slope at this point? Negative 9.8. Yes, that's correct. So the slope at this point is the same as everywhere else, because this is a straight line. <laughs> or it's supposed to be a straight line. Exactly. He really wants another chair. Yeah, he wants... There you go. You can use that one. Why you got to take the new guy's money? <laughs> um, the guy, who, who's doing that? You know that he wants to tell you a friend. No, he didn't buy that one. He didn't buy that one. That's from minor interior. Now, what should you know, be for Kevin? Right? Your mic. Matter of fact, before you say that, play what Kevin said when he was here. Play Kevin. Mike turned into the... the Okay. Silence is golden. Okay. So even here, when the when the velocity is zero, the acceleration is uh, the same. Right. So now let's get back to the problem at hand. Now that we analyzed it. So it's always good to, to look at the problem and dissect it and try to gain as much information about it before you even try to solve it, right? What's going on here? What is, what is the acceleration? You, you kind of have to use your um, inquisitiveness, right? You know, I, this doesn't make sense. How can I work it out? And, and, and you gain a lot more information that way. And it really, really helps with, with these problems. Even because many times it, a seemingly in, uh, insignificant question becomes significant later and then you could use it then. But all right, back to the point. So how high does it go? Right? So how can, can we figure out how high it goes? To get the height, don't you need to first get the time? Well, that, that's, a, that's a great question. All right. Do we need the time? We'll use one of these equations, right? We, can we figure out the time? So we have here. You can use right? the first one. Yes, all right. So if we, we use this first one, one is at zero. What, what are we figuring out time for? One? I'm sorry. Oh, it's okay. So if we use this first one, what would happen? Velocity, the end velocity should be zero, initial should be 15. That's right. So, so, so in this problem, what you would want to do is, okay, so what happens at this position? What are these quantities at this position? And, and these, uh, these free fall problems or projectile motion, which we'll get into, this, this height when it's at the top is very special because the we know that the velocity is zero, right? So at top, so that means that we, we set this to zero and I solve it. Remember A is negative. I'm just, I'm just skipping uh, the algebra here. Well, partially skipping the algebra. And we find that T is just V naught divided by 9.8. Professor? Yes. So what it is is the velocity as a function of time. What's this, the formula, large formula? Yes, I, I may, let me put in, uh, I'll, I'll write it like this. Let, let me, let me re rewrite these with, with uh, the T. I didn't, you, a lot of times you don't, well, in the book they don't use VT, but I, it's nice to have this so that you know that it's not a constant. Okay. All right. All right. And then this X is also a T, right? A 
okay? So we figured it out at the top. We know that the velocity is zero, so we know T. Then what do we do? We plug this T into here, right? And we solve it. Right? And then we can find what X is. 100% we could do that. Or this is kind of already done for us. It's done in this equation. I, I didn't fully derive it last time uh, due to co time constraints, but that's what we did already for this equation. So if we're not given T and we want to know a distance, we could use this formula over here where uh, v, t, v of T is equal to, to V naught and then acceleration and then minus uh, this. And then what this quantity is, is the distance. What, what we could relabel as the distance over here. Right. Uh, professor. Yes. For the V zero on the bottom left, uh, yeah, a little bit up, the one above it. Wouldn't it, no, under it, wouldn't it be negative V zero? No, it's our acceleration, negative 9.8. I already brought it over to the other side. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So th this would be negative and then this is zero. I skipped the step and then, okay. and then, uh, so Ma negatives cancel. Makes sense. Yeah. So we could have done it this way or we could have just used this formula as well. Right now, I'll erase this and then let's just use the other formula. And so then we have this. And I'm just going to put D over here because we just care about the distance. We don't know the height that we start at, you know. So then now this is zero. And we could plug it in. D. So let's solve for D. So D would be negative so over 2A. And then when we plug it in, we get this. And then we get a height of 11 meters. Yeah. Easy. That's not bad, right? We just had one formula, one unknown. We, we knew, well, technically we had two unknowns, right? We had uh, the V and D, but we, we kind of used the, the equation that V, this is zero at the top. So there's two unknowns, now we have two equations and we were able to solve it, right? So now part B, So for part B, how long is the ball in the air? So we actually calculated the time before, right? To the top. And this was equal to what? V, V naught over what? G. This, um, so the time to the top, is equal to this, right? And, right, and now can we use this to calculate the total time? Yes, so uh, what we use a lot is symmetry in the problem, right? So this problem is symmetric in, with, with time. Right? So when it's moving up, it goes, it goes up to 15. Uh, I mean, it, go, it goes up to that this distance, right? 
And when it falls back down, it's accelerated by the same acceleration. Now it's accelerated by the same acceleration. So when it gets down to the beginning again, it will have the same velocity as what it started with, but in the negative direction, right? So the velocity at each point along here is the same, is equal and opposite to the velocity at each point along here because we have a constant acceleration, right? So this means, so th what does this mean about the total time as compared to the time to the top? Twice. It's double, that's correct. So the total time, T total, is equal to 2VA, right? And when we calculate this, um, somebody wants to type it in for me because they don't actually go over this in the book. Well, I, I'll get, just give you the number because I know that it's the same. It comes after this, right? Now that's one way to do it. The other way, which they do it in the book is, they use this formula, x not um, uh, x uh, is equal to x not v not t plus uh, one half a t squared. Now, in this problem, we're working in the y direction. So instead of uh, calling the variable the distance variable x, we'll call it y. So we could use this. So now we have this one, right? Now we have to figure it out. We know the initial velocity. We know the acceleration. We don't know the time. And we kind of don't know the starting position, right? We'll call that zero or, or, or some number, right? We don't know. Um, we're not explicitly given y zero. For the starting position, aren't we using ground level since like well, what do we call zero in this case? We're not at ground level. The guy's standing at ground level, right? What we'll, what we'll do is we'll call this zero, right? This is, well, more generally, this is y zero, but we can just give it some quantity in this case, zero, because uh, uh, everything relevant to this problem kind of can we could use this as our reference point right i mean if we did the calculation of how long does it take to reach the ground then we would want to set this to, to uh as uh zero right and then y zero would start at some height you know but so let's look at these two things right y zero and y What's our ending position here? Or ending height, I should, uh, we should say. Back where we started. Back where we started from, right? So this is y0. So our, at t, total, we'll have y0, right, is equal to y. Right, we'll have that. So then these two cancel out and we're left with this. A T, you see that? And then this T cancels out with this exponent. And then we could solve this now. And we'll, we'll solve it for t, and we'll get t is equal to 2 
over a, um, I'm sorry, over V negative A. Now, th the reason why we have a negative sign as compared to up here is because we already took care of that, actually. Um, we, we should probably put it back in here. I, we lost it, if you remember, when I took into account that, uh, that uh, the actual uh, A is negative. So I, I kind of took that into account over here. So, and if we look, it's the same equation in the end, right? So we solved it two different ways, right? The, fir the first way that we solved it is, oh, we, we know that to the top, it's just, it's just half the time as going through the full, um, uh, uh, the full motion from uh, being thrown up to coming back down to the same level. And then we just use that to solve it because we already had that, that time from, from the first part. So there's many ways to solve these problems. And then it comes out to the same this, uh, time as this. So, now let's, let's take this problem a little bit further and ask the question, how, what's the velocity at this point? Right, we are, I already gave you the answer to this just based on the symmetry, but let's explicitly calculate it. So now we know, let me write down some relevant quantities. We know that this is 11.5 meters and then uh, and then I'll write down T total as right. so so now now let's ask uh All right, so let's figure this out. Which equation do we want to figure out what the V final is? The first equation, the very top. This one? We could use that. Yeah. What, what other ways? Can, can we do it another way? What are variables? The, the, do we have time, the well, final time? Oh, oh, it's over here. So the T total is uh -huh. 3.06. I think the first one. Then. Oh, yes, I, I agree. We could do it with the first yeah. one. What, uh, what other ways can we do it, though? The third one. We could use the third one, right? Because we know the distance. It's given right over here. We calculated it up. We know the acceleration. We know the initial velocity. So we could use either one. I see, I see that it's to the power of something. I have to use square roots. It's a little bit more difficult than using the first one. So I choose the first one. Okay. So let's calculate the velocity now. So we know the time, 3.6 seconds. And this is equal to V0. And then this is 3.6. Okay. 
And then when we calculate it, so 15 minus 9.8, let me write the acceleration down here. Times 3.86. And as you can see, this I can just round it right now, right? This is about 10, this is about three. Three times 10 is what? Is 30, right? So it's 15 minus 30, and it actually will come out to be exactly 15 because uh, you have the 0.8, you know, a 9.8 over here, and then uh, the 3.06. These two will, will uh, the deviations from 10 and 3 will uh, cancel each other out, and this will end up being negative 15 meters per second, right? So at the end, it's equal and opposite, the, the velocity, right? Now let's do it using the second formula. Let's do this again using the second formula. Or uh, I'm sorry. Let's calculate the time again that it takes using the second formula. The reason why I want to do it is to show you the quadratic formula. Um, so let, let me let me just do this real quick. Um, show you the quadratic formula. So we we have this right. Y zero a 